even though I was the one who pressed the button to start filming for some reason, I wasn't prepared to start filming. But welcome to the final video in my wrapping up 2019 series, which is a two video long series. But sh the last video that I made was talking about my top five reads of the year. And this video, surprisingly enough, is talking about my bottom five reads of the year. Again, there were only 15 books to choose from. So it wasn't a particularly big pool of books but somehow i managed to separate that out into i guess my top five middle five and bottom five and today we're going to talk about the bottom five none of this makes any sense let's just start so the first book on this list again in chronological order is anger of angels and this one i have here it is look at this and look it was fine but it was also awful i feel really bad because this is a book that my little brother gave to me for christmas and he was very excited about it because he looked at the blurb and he looked at what kind of book it was and he was like jazz likes reading fantasy this is a historical fantasy we good so it's set in renaissance italy but fantasy renaissance italy which is fine and it's the story of the daughter of a court jester who writes a play about a king in a town not too far away from the town that she lives in and this particular play is not very nice about said king and said king decides that he's gonna wage war on the city that she lives in like the story itself fine the book I wish I could explain just how ridiculous the book is. It's been so long since I read it that I can't remember a lot of it. So maybe I can throw up some screenshots of some of the stuff that I was laughing about and you can kind of see for yourself the reasons why this book did not rate very highly with me. book on this list uh, is pretty much in the same vein as the first book on this list. That was Unenchanted. I can't remember who this book was by. It was an ebook that I had on my phone for a long time and I didn't have anything else to read and I was in a slump. Usually when I'm in a slump I read either trashy fantasy or trashy romance and this book was trashy fantasy. So I read this trashy fantasy ebook and it uh, lived up to every horrible expectation that I should have had for it as a trashy fantasy ebook. This particular book I actually uh, made a Twitter thread of all of my reactions to it as I was reading it and you can go and scroll through that thread and just laugh to your heart's content and appreciate the uh, sexism, the casual racism and just general ridiculousness that was this ridiculous book. The next book on this list is Lady Chatterley's Lover, which is a book that I read because supposedly it's a bit saucy. It's supposed to be quite a controversial saucy romance. So I read it in February as a classic Valentine's read. I thought it would be funny. But instead, all I did was learn about the decline of the human condition and Bolshevism. And that was about it. And it, yeah, this book was not good. I didn't even finish it. That's how little I was enjoying it. And normally I can put up with not very well written classics if only for the sake of getting some kind of value out of them. I'll be like, all right, well, it's not very well written, but it has some interesting points. So I'll read it for that. This book did not even have that. It was written like a Trump tweet and its opinions were shit. <laughs> so I didn't finish it. <laughs> the next book on this list is another trashy romance and that was Fairy Tale of New York. This is a book that my housemate was going to throw out when we moved into this house and she was like, do you want it? any of this pile of books? And I looked at them and was like, I mean, it's December. I'm kind of in the mood for some trashy romance. Some of these books are trashy romance, so I might as well read them. So I read this one. It was called Fairy Tale in New York. It sounded like it was gonna be kind of trashy Christmas romancy. And look, Christmas featured in it, but not a lot. And overall, the book just suffered from all of the usual things that trashy romance tends to suffer from, which is just terrible, very outdated views of 
masculinity and femininity and uh, token gay friends but like badly written token gay friends and just oddness and drama and fake romance and a twist at the end that I am still angry about because I didn't care for it. This was one of those books that I didn't actively hate while I was reading it but I know that it brought absolutely nothing of value to me or my life or my brain so it yeah. The final book on this list is actually one of the first books that I read this year and I don't know why it's at the end of this list if we're going chronologically but we'll ignore that and that is actually Every Man in This Village is a Liar and this book was also eh and this probably comes into play a bit with the whole I only read 15 books this year so it's pretty hard to kind of separate the eh from the really bad books because there weren't many to choose from in general like maybe if I'd read more books this one would have managed to skim itself out of the bottom five. So this book is a memoir written by a journalist who was in Afghanistan in the Middle East acting as a foreign war correspondent during the times of George W. Bush's war on terrorism in all of those countries. It talks about like a lot of really interesting and eye-opening events and it was very informative read for a lot of reasons. But two things that this book suffered from that made it not rate very highly as far as I'm concerned were one the fact that she never really gave any indication that she realized she was writing for the general public and she never gave any further explanations for stuff that was happening and terminology and acronyms and that kind of thing she just left you to find out for yourself and like I don't mind looking up terms from time to time but it happened so often that it just was constantly detracting from any actual reading that I was doing because I'd have to be doing googling and research and finding out what on earth she was talking about what acronym is she using this time and that just seemed to me like it was very thoughtless writing to kind of assume that because you know what this word and what this term means that everyone even those outside of the journalism field would know what you're talking about and the second thing that I didn't particularly like about this book was that the viewpoint that she had of a lot of the cultures and a lot of the populations that she was visiting and working with just came across as very like American abroad. It was just like this tone that was always there in the writing that came across like she just didn't have a very high opinion of anyone in any of these countries and she thought that everything was sort of backwards and dirty and not very impressive and as a reader that made me pretty uncomfortable not because of the stuff that I was being shown but because of the fact that I was kind of endorsing this woman's not very high view of other people and other countries. And that's the reason why why this book is also on this bottom five list of books that just didn't impress me this year. If you've read any of these books I'd love to hear if you also didn't like them or if you did like them. I'd be curious to know why and what your differing opinion is and all of that kind of stuff. But yeah let's just have a good old chat about books down in the comments. I will see you for another video very shortly I'm sure. And until then, as always, stay classic. Mwah. Sit there. Count your little fingers Unhappy little girl blue